Hey everyone, it is the year 2020, and that means it is a leap year. And in fact, today is February 29th, which means it is the leap day of leap year. And I want to encourage everyone out there to do more leaping in their lives this year and to document it in photos. Now, being someone who likes photography and travel, I have a long history of jumping photographs. This particular image is from my very first trip to Washington, D.C. in 1996. And since then, I've jumped and captured it in pictures in uh, many other places uh, that I've traveled to. And it's not just me. I have cohorts in my family and among friends who participate in these photos, uh, sometimes pets as well. And in my tour work as a tour guide to historic sites, I've encouraged and helped set up some great photos with some of my student groups as a fun way for them to remember the landmarks that they visit. Now in the early days, we did this with film cameras, which meant you really had one chance to get it right and you didn't even know if you got it right until a few weeks later when you got your film developed. Today, things are much easier because you can do multiple attempts and know immediately whether you got it. And you can use things such as uh, freeze framing or burst photos to capture uh, images at the right moment. Now, the downside of this advancement in technology is that a lot of people assume that it's the technology that makes a good picture. And they forget that the number one thing that makes a good picture is you, the person behind the camera because where you choose to stand and even your position you stand in and the elements you bring in into the side to frame your picture, you are creating a work of art. It's not just taking a picture. And this is especially true when it comes to jumping pictures. Let me explain by using this little drawing I call the landmark leap. Let's say that uh, there's a, some famous historic landmark that you visit and you want to do a leaping photo in front of it and you've got a couple photographers. Now, the, you'll want to uh, have the photographers uh, capture you in a good position where you're not too close or too far away because inside the frame of the picture you want to be almost as big as the landmark in the background. So let's look at the trajectory, the angles of this photo starting with this photographer standing. This would be the line of sight that they need to take the photo in order to capture the whole landmark. Now notice your subject is in the air, but what do you see beneath them? You just sort of see more ground. So it's a nice photo, but you can make the leaper go even higher, not physically, but let's look at this photographer who squatted way down and got as close to the ground as he or she could. And to capture the landmark, this is the angle that they're taking the photo. Now notice uh, that, uh, that your leaper is higher up in the frame and fills it up more uh, in front of the landmark. And here's the key. This is the line of sight underneath of the leaper. That's what you can see under them, not ground, but you actually see the landmark. And, uh, and it gives an impression of them being really high in the air. You don't have to be uh, a great leaper with major hops to, to get this. Uh, you can just lift your legs up uh, for a little bit and boom, you've got this space captured underneath. Now, to demonstrate this on site, let's go out on town and uh, look for a landmark. I've come out here to the Grove Park Inn, uh, one of Asheville, North Carolina's most famous landmarks, and I'm going to do a leaping picture in front of this landmark. And to demonstrate uh, good techniques in doing so, I'm first going to uh, take a picture, do a leap, uh, with the camera place where most people tend to do it in a standing position. So it's at the height as if I was standing. Uh, I'm going to actually film it and freeze frame it at the peak of my leap. But let's see how that comes out 
uh, with the picture taken at uh, the camera being at this height. One, two, three. Now I'm going to do that same leaping picture from the same direction, but at a much lower angle. In fact, uh, I'm not even going to use the tripod, but I'm going to go as low as I co can go by setting the camera directly on the ground. In fact, uh, I'm uh, using just a little rock to keep it uh, propped up at the angle I want. But let's see the difference and how that comes out. One, two, three, snap! Now, I've relocated up to near the top of the Grove Park Inn to take in this uh, really amazing view of Asheville and the surrounding mountains. So uh, let's change perspective a bit and say we want our leap to be not just in front of these landmarks, but above and over. So the same lesson of taking the image from a low angle is really gonna help you out here. So let's demonstrate that and I've set up uh, a camera at the same height uh, as if I was taking it from a standing position. So let's see what that looks like first. One, two, three. Yeah. And here we are at the much lower angle. I didn't go completely low as I could go because I don't want to totally lose my background. But let's see what that looks like. One, two, three. So there you have it. It's not so much the technology of your camera or phone, nor the leaping ability of your subject, but just some clever positioning is what's going to put some extra bounce in your leaping photos for 2020. Happy leap year, everyone.